I was 18 years old. So uh, I've been in the United States since then, and I praise God that uh, I am able um, to be here with you, and thank you so much for the prayer. Uh, thank you for the support that you send every month. And we want to show you what we do with your support because in every uh, thing that you do, um, Church of the New Covenant, everything that we do, you are with us because of your support. So um, you may say, well, it's this much or that much, but everything counts, and so you're with us there. And um, at that time when we uh, first opened United in Christ Ministry, it was in the year 2000, um, I got saved. My spiritual father is actually Brother Mark. He's in another church, but you know him because he was here like I think two years ago. And he is my spiritual father. He actually found me on the street. Um, not that I didn't have a place to live, but I actually was going into a bar. And then so he stopped me. He shared the gospel with me. And uh, he discipled me, and um, then the Lord sent me to Bible school, and then the call to go to missions. And then I had a, a wonderful job, um, had just everything that you want to have. And then the Lord says, I gave you all those things, so I want you to serve me. And uh, so, yes, uh, I say, yes, Lord. So I left everything that I had, and I went to the mission field. We started in Mexico, and we felt like we were just going to be uh, two missionaries that will be helping, and it's just exploded everything. So praise God, because um, I, it, we couldn't do it, but the Lord did it and continues to do it. So praise God. Let's just um, pray, and uh, everything that will come out of my, ma my mouth that there will be um, the Lord speaking. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the Church of the New Covenant, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Chester. Thank you for all the flock right here, Lord. And um, Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you have done to partner us, Lord, to go to the, the nations, Lord. And um, we believe that at one time we couldn't um, really picture what it all was that you had in mind but now, Lord, we see it, and we continue to see it. Um, thank you for allowing us to be part of this end times and to be part of what you're doing around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And the word of God says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Amen? amen. And um, we want... Um, show you i don't know if thank you sister you there <laughs> okay so we go to the next slide and i think i'm gonna ask uh sister nikki to help us here okay and the vision uh the vision of united in christ is makes disciples of uh, jesus christ to the nations that's always been since the first day our our um vision and also to demonstrate the love of god to our neighbor and um in the United Christ, we actually go to uh, different parts um, that the Lord sent us, and we begin to um, evangelize, and then then the Lord will let, let us know if he wants a, a church planted there, um, or you know we will continue to move on. So the Lord has been so gracious um, to allow us to be in different places in Mexico, and there's now 52 different locations. Yes, I know. Praise the Lord, because whew, and he takes us to the different places. We work actually with four different dialects in Mexico, where their language is actually their uh, dialect, and then Spanish is their second language. So, yeah, very, very interesting. In Mexico, they are, I will say, more than 75 different languages, if, even though uh, Spanish is their main language, like we work with the Tarahumaras in Chihuahua, we work with the Nahuatl in San Luis, and we work with the Choles and Centales in Chiapas, right next to Guatemala. In just Guatemala and Oaxaca, they have each one over 20 different languages. Yeah. 
So um, it is an amazing work. Um, and this year, um, we want to just show you uh, what the Lord is, is doing. But uh, this year also, we um, eh, begin to really see, well, last year it was that the Lord sent us to Israel. And um, we well, actually, this will be our seventh time in February that we go to Israel. We'll just uh, uh, we'll, we'll have some slides about Israel. And also India, two years ago, and baby pastor met them. They were in Mexico um, when he was visiting. But there is a brother <clears throat> from India, and then she got, he got married with um, a sister from um, Mexico, from Tabasco, Mexico. And their, their um, goal was to get to India and open um, an orphanage. So praise God, you know, we've been working in India also. Um, and we actually, Brother Mark and I have been working a lot in a lot of the leadership and a lot of um, uh, work that we do with the pastors, um, trainings, visiting and then when the lord they invite us to a home and the lord uh, reassure us that he will like uh, a church plant there then we do that and um so all those things and and it seems like it's hard but when is your calling it's just you know very natural and organic that's what i call it i'll call it organic because it just happens you know uh, and we just begin to disciple and so we do that a lot, um, and the Word of God says in Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, uh, In what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrusted to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. We couldn't do all this without you know, training and giving a chance to the uh, Mexican leaders or the Indian leaders um, and now to Israel. And uh, so you have to really teach and teach and teach and then entrust them and trust them. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit is the one that does all the work. You know, he is, he is. Um, there's some things that we say, oh, this wasn't the way. We wanted it, but no, we need to do it the way God wants it, you know. So um, uh, praise God, and then we can go to the next slide, and that's um, Jal Jadalpur, India. Okay, that over there, uh, on that first picture on the left, is uh, Sandeep. His last name is Das. Um, Sandeep is sort of like saying Juan or Jose uh, in the Hispanics. You know, usually it's a very common name. Um, so Sandeep, and then the, the, the lady on the left-hand side as his wife, and her name is Ana Ruth Astudillo. She is Mexican. Um, and then uh, the children, you have Mia, which is the oldest one, and then Joshua, and the baby was born in India. His name is Israel. <laughs> so they were with us, and we worked together with them in Mexico, and they say, you know, our goal is India. We want to go to India. So it's going to be almost um, two years. They've been in India, and we now have a children's home for boys and a children's home for girls from the street and also a soup kitchen and uh, also a uh, church there. Lots of prayers. Please, when you remember uh, us, rem remember them because there's a lot of persecution uh, there, lots of persecution. So please remember them in your prayers. Just um, say United Christ India or Sandeep or Anna Ruth or the missionaries there. So uh, there's another slide, I think, on that one. Yes. Yeah, that's the soup kitchen. Um, one thing that is really interesting is like, you know, in Mexico we have to buy like tables and chairs. We don't have to do that here. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's that's the you know they 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 eat in the on the floor and and it's an interesting um, beautiful place beautiful place beautiful children and the love they have for for India it's it's amazing um, they send us videos when their children are singing and then they needed some um, mattresses and everything then they they do a video and they said thank you so much now we can sleep in mattresses and so they are there it's an amazing work there praise god so i think there was a slide or two prior a uh, one with zacatecas is that around there is it yes 
in Zacatecas and then oh it's before the, the teaching. Yes. No, sorry. sorry. There it is. Okay, Zacatecas. I, I know Pastor I've heard us probably pronounce his name Zacatecas. Zacatecas. It's the middle of Mexico. Okay, and in the middle of Mexico, it's totally different than a lot of the areas in Mexico. Um, there's um, a particular um, place right there, Zacatecas. It's a state, but it's also a city. And uh, that's where we began our work in the year 2000. And um, so we had a, a rehabilitation center for drug and alcohol and, um, in a church. And for many years, it was only adults. But then the government said, you know, what we need really is for young people. Um, there we're having problems, major problems with drugs, drug cartels. And they are buying the girls. So we actually are working with girls 12 years to 17, sometimes 18. We rescue them from the uh, prostitution. The actual soldiers and the police, the federal police, brings them. It is a, a locked place because of the danger of leaving them. And they told them when they get there to the rehab centers, they said, look, this is your last chance. If you do not stay in this place, then next time you will go to the, um, um, what's it called, the youth, uh, the jail, you know, the prison. So... Um, most of all the kids, they're in these new drugs, very heavy drugs. Uh, the girls, they come prostitution from drugs, from abuse, a lot of abuse. And so only from 12 to 17, that's what we accept. In our rehab centers, the two of them are packed full. So the treatment is Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. Jesus changed their hearts. You should see this young man, young women, praising God. And when they have been out there, that they were looking for them to kill them or something, they come to Jesus and their lives totally change. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, the pastors, directors are doing a wonderful job. And their sons already uh, and, and the daughters already work also with the kids. Um, we offer a psychologist, a doctor, and we have a um, sports teacher and also recreation. Um, we also do uh, a vocational, the girls they saw, and there's been some donations sewing machines. So there is a sister that comes and teaches them to sew. It's a very, very neat program, and we've seen a lot of good results. And it takes a lot, but there's some people that are called to do this. So praise the Lord. And the next one, I think we've seen it, that one. We've seen that one, and then that one we've seen. There's a picture, and... One more. Israel. Praise the Lord. Israel, what can I say? Amazing. Awesome. And I don't know, maybe when we were here the last time we talked about Israel and about, you know, sometimes we used to say these things like in faith. I know the Lord has called us and I know one day we'll be there, but we're there. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Um, this is a totally different organization. It's, it's sister of Uniting Christ, but it's a totally different organization because missionaries are not allowed in Israel. And uh, the gospel, you have to be very careful. You cannot evangelize um, someone who is under 18 unless you're under 18. Okay? So, plus, you cannot brave someone. You, you can almost evangelize um, Arabs, but you're not allowed to evangelize Jewish people. Yeah, yeah. So um, they want to keep it Jewish. But we, we love Israel. I mean, the, our Savior came from there. 
and the Lord is going to come back there, so we need to be ready. Um, but this is their logo, and uh, and it's been actually somebody from Emporia designed the logo for us. It's called the Branch of Comfort. Um, Anav Hanemaha. Um, we've been learning some Hebrew. We had to, but. We wanted to, because our vision is making disciples of Jesus Christ, but also helping the people in need. So we wanted to, for the Lord to send us to a place. So we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. We went two times. The Lord confirmed that we had to be there. And um, the Lord kept saying, Ethiopian Jewish people, Ethiopian Jewish people. So, okay. So we go that time and we said, okay, Lord, show us how. This is a different country. This is not Mexico. This is not United States. This is not India. It's a different country. How do we do it? You have to be very careful in what you say. You have to be careful that they don't know that you're a Christian because they're Christians. They're all together. No, anybody that will say, I am a Christian, which there are tons of denominations and different uh, religious, religions. Um, so... Um, we we say we're believers. So when you say you, we're I'm a believer, that means you're a Christian, but you're not saying you're a Christian. So I'm a believer, Jesus, you know, Yeshua. So um, actually, the lawyer that opened this organization, he says, you know what? Yes, I have a sister that her and I work together. So this is Sister Aini, right on her picture, and over there is Pastor Tzedabot. Um so the vote means a uh, uh, lore of hosts. Okay, there um, there are Ethiopian Jewish people, uh, amazing, amazing people. Uh, truly, you have to meet them. You will fall in love with them. And she's always very, very joyful, very joyful. And she has a great testimony in Israel. And when the um, the lawyer sent us there, Joshua Pax, and says, you know, go to Sister Aini. I'm going to give you her phone number. You know, pray with her and her husband and see what the Lord will do. So we come to their, or because they have a church, or he has a, a church there. And she goes like, oh my gosh, I want to work in something humanitarian because the organization is humanitarian. She says, oh my goodness. She says, I pray for this. I pray, I pray for this. I, I know I, I'm a pastor's wife, but I know that separately the Lord has called me to help the poor. And so we do Shabbat dinners, and uh, in the Shabbat dinners, um, there's a lot of young people that we have, and they're all Ethiopian Jewish people, and they're awesome, awesome kids. Almost all, every week they send us what they're doing. You know, it's an amazing work to go to the streets, and we do the Shabbat dinners and share the love of God. And um, so we also, um, she had previously worked with Holocaust survivors, families, because the Holocaust survivors, some of them are dead or they're very old. But with the um, children and grandchildren that came with them. So we do um, give them gift cards or take them to the, uh, she takes them to the, um, um, uh, to buy their foods, diapers, and so forth. So this is um, what is being done there, and um, it's an amazing work here. We work with orphans. That's why we couldn't just show the, the girl's uh, face, um, because if we do put something on Facebook, it's really, we're very, very careful in India and with Israel. So sometimes we don't, because we don't want to cause them any problems. And so, but um, it is an amazing work right behind us. We took them and we said, you know what? Let's just get away. So why don't we go to the north? So this is the um, Galilee Sea in the back of us. Yes, an awesome place. So we're working on Tel Aviv and we're also um, helping out, uh, giving uh, food, back foods, um, and um, also children's gifts, Ma more than anything else, is their, for their school, you know, because the, the children need um, lots of different articles for school. So she buys them, and you know, she gives them to them, and goes and prays for the families. Amen. It's an, an amazing work, and we give thanks to God for what He's doing, really, and allow us to be there in Israel. So the next one. 
Thank you. Now we land on Jesus, and I see you guys uh, are you know always sending gifts. And last year, because of you, we were able to give eighteen hundred or eighteen hundred and fifty you know, yeah gifts. And, and um, even um, we send money to Israel and money to uh, India because it's very costly to send the gifts. So it's better to send the money. But thank you so much. Thank you. Um, there's a group from, from uh, Emporia that goes in and handles, and handles the, 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 the gifts to the children. So um, here's the soup kitchen. We got three soup kitchens in Mexico. Um, one in Matamoros. Pastor, I think you've been in all this, <laughs> the places. One in Matamoros and one in Ciudad Victoria and one in the jungle. Um, and then we got three rehabilitation centers, one in Matamoros and the two in Zacatecas. And we got a children's home <coughs> in Matamoros. Uh, it's called the Love Homes. I think you've been there. And uh, it's really growing and, and doing well, praise God. And then the ones in India. So a lot of evangelism work and every church plans they do their own evangelism. Our goal is like through uniting Christ that one person gets saved a day. So that's our goal. So only God knows. <laughs> we can uh, go to the next one, brother. Thank you. Okay, and um, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. I don't know. I don't know if the next person to go will be you. I was one day entering a bar. And in a few minutes later, I have eternal life. My life completely changed. So I don't know. And then all of a sudden, the Lord says, you're a missionary. And I'm like, oh. I have a career, I have this, I have that. And it says, you're going to the mission field. And I'm like, oh, wow, praise the Lord. The only thing you have to say is, okay, this is what you want. But what is God wanting to do even here in Emporia or in Kansas or around the world? Or maybe the Lord has called you to be an intercessor. Maybe the Lord has called you to work with the poor people around here. Everything is needed. We're all missionaries here. We're all ministers of the world, God. So um, I have just a short message, Pastor. Is that okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And actually, uh, we title it Principles About Being on Mission with God. Amen. Um, because we're all in this mission with God. Amen. We're all made to serve Him and serve others. That is... Uh, the vision that God has for you and for me. So he saved you for a purpose. You know, he saved you for a purpose. Um, two months ago, I was feeling really sick, really sick. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. In this sickness, the Lord spoke to me and says, Chacho, do not leave the earth until you complete the task that I gave you to complete. I was like, oh, God. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, you get excited. And you said, oh, Lord, am I going? Am I leaving? And I was all excited already, you know. And uh, somebody gave me a book about heaven. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Brother Mark, I said, I'm starting to visualize heaven. And I like it, you know. But then the Lord says, you're still not through with what I gave you here. It says, do not leave this earth do you complete what you were called for here so i don't know for you what it is you know but you do have to really get so close to the lord that you'll be, be able to hear his voice and have the assurance of what it is the time is clicking the you know the clock is tick, 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 tick. so you really just have to make sure and say okay god what is my call what do i need to do Whatever it is, small, medium, or large, big, I don't know. But what it is, is don't leave this earth until you do that. Amen? 
we don't want to get there and up there and say, Laura, I'm here. And it's like, mm, you missed something. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay, let's go to Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. And the word God says, Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 15. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those who he desired. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast demons. Amen. And we were just praying, meditating on these verses, and then the Lord gave us the first point, and it is called by grace, not for anything that we have done, because we're, we, we can't do it ourselves. Amen. Amen. So he said, called by grace. In the verse 13 and we see the second part of it. It's called to him, it says the verse, those who he desire. Who he desire. Praise the Lord that he already called us. Amen. Praise the Lord that we're in already. Amen. Right? So, but he is looking and he, he may use you, he will use you, and to be in a strategic places. So that you can share the gospel and that person that needs to be saved will be saved. Amen. Brother Mark said uh, in our testimony that he did not want to go evangelizing that night. But that was one of his classes. <laughs> so he says like, oh, I feel sick. I don't want to go. And I'm thinking, what if you would have never come? <laughs> I was like, what? Because there's life. So if you encounter someone, it's for a reason. You have to share the gospel. You do have to um, see. And, and you know what? It, this is the thing is that the people will throw you some things like say, you know, I, you say, how are you doing? It's like. Oh, I'm sick. And then immediately it's a door open for you. Because God has called you to pray for the sick. God has called you. And so God, the Holy Spirit, will open the door for you. And there's some of them very resistant. Says, oh, just, you know, I'll continue to pray for you. I love you. And something. You're going to leave him with something. So it is very interesting um, that day that Brother Mark did not want to evangelize. That's the day I got saved. Yeah. And it doesn't depend on us. It depends on God. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is drawing people. The only thing is you have to be aware. You almost have to get out of yourself yeah. That's right. and, 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 and not focus on yourself but focus in God and in the purpose that he has, you know. And so when he did, he goes like, he got saved. And then he did it a little bit harder for me because he, what he did is like, he says, well, if you want to pray the sinner's prayer, then kneel down. And I'm in front of my so-called friends and in front of the bar and people in and out. And I said, yes, I will. And so I kneel down and, and receive Jesus Christ. And he says, he was like, oh, my Lord, this is real. You know, <laughs> this is totally real. And I'm like, I'm like, this is his thing. I said, thank you. Thank you so much. And my friend's pulling me. And I was like, no, I'm going home. Praise the Lord. So praise God. Um, just keep this in mind because a lot of times we get very prideful and we said, well, you know, it's me, but it's in First John chapter 4, verse 19, it says, We love because he first loved us. He initiated. Your salvation was initiated by God. 
not because we were just wonderful. No, I was a sinner and I was drinking and I was doing all these crazy things. No, no, no. It was because of his mercy and because of his, you know, what he had in mind for us to do. Praise the Lord. So um, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, it says, and this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation or atoning sacrifice for our sins. You know, when I think about God, oh, mm. and I know I like to talk to Pastor Chester. He always gets me fire up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, wow, what a father, you know, to send his only son that he loved. And Jesus having everything in heaven and then saying, I'm going to be a missionary down there and saying, God, Father, my goodness, this, this, this job that I have is all these lost people, all, and the ones that have been, the ones that are, and the ones that will be, you know, and then coming down to earth to save us and to die for us. And when I think about that, I was like, Wow, what a father. What a father. And, and Jesus is, ooh, I mean, he go through all these things for us. And um, so, yes, it is, it is it's wonderful to have in mind. And I meditate on, on certain scriptures because sometimes I have to be to, to not only to the word of God, but the reality of it. There's life in the word of God. And the, the next point is the best response to God's gracious call that we need to receive. It's the, the love-filled obedience, just to be obedient. And, and that's, with us, sometimes it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult for me, for you, for many people, is to be obedient. Because we want to do what we want to do, right? And so verse 13 right there in Mark chapter 13, Three, verse 13, the, the third part of verse 13, it says, they came to him. They were obedient. They came to him. So when God called each one of the apostles, they came to him. They came to him. So they were obedient. And um, obviously the, this didn't take a lot. So when the Lord calls you for a mission, and the Lord says, you're going to pack some food, Take it downtown. If you find somebody on the street, give it to them. And so what do we have to do? Okay. Let me be obedient. I, I don't have to say, oh, Lord, you know what? Mm, not tonight. There's it's a snow. Not tonight because I, I have to go with my friends. No. It's just be obedient to what God is calling you to do. And the other thing is that you have to honor him with your gifts. And there's many people in this room, they have gifts. Oh my gosh. We see you all and you have tons of gifts. So you really have to use those gifts. Because God has given you those gifts and talents for him. So whatever it is, you have to give it back to the Lord. I mean, if it's just to receive people, to help the teachers, to do something, you know, for the kingdom of God. Because this gives, you know, mm, the, he will actually ask you what you did with the gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I've said many times that, but somebody, sometimes when somebody comes from the outside and tells you, right, it's different. But it is, it is. It's God, you're accountable. So if I have all these gifts, I have to use them for the Lord. Amen. You know, and I have to use them and say, Lord, yes, I, I, I will, I will, I will. I, it can be something small, it can be something big, but use them. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. The Lord is with you. But the only thing you have to do is just be obedient. And he will open the door. You don't know what God is going to do when you're obedient. You don't know, you know, that as you begin to serve him, the Lord will continue to raise you up for his glory, for his honor. People will come to him. 
Um, there's so many things. So let's not limit ourselves. Remember, um, our God is the creator, not only of the heavens, the earth, but of billions of people. We're all very different, and he's a creator. So when we we talk about God, we say, hmm, would it be this? How are we going to do it? Well, no, the Lord already knows. He's a creator. He created us differently, each one of us. And we can't trust him with that. My goodness, right? I always tell the people in Mexico, no, 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 no. you are made for this. And they go like, I don't have it. It's like, don't, just go. Just do it. Just respond. And the Lord will find you. You know, when we begin this um, ministry, we begin with $100. And just, they will ask us, and how are you going to do it? And you lost, you, you already have your job. I mean, you had your job and you can't come back to it. It's like, well, I don't want to come back. You know, I don't want to come back. Although the company, I still work with the company every four years or so. They will call to be an administrative position that's open at going cover. And for a few weeks or something, they still do. And it's always good to leave the door open behind you and it's always good to have a great testimony because that really helps and so yeah once in a while i still do that but i depend on god everything everything we work by faith and that's what we do and god has done so many things so many things uh, and the other thing is just being a good administrator, you have to be a good administrator of your gifts and talents and of your money, financial. Oh, I forgot something. Be a good administrator in your time. If I can say that. <laughs> of your time is really important. It's really important. So um, the next step um, is the key to fruitfulness in missions with God is walking closely to Jesus. Have an intimate relationship with the Lord. And uh, verse 14 says, And he appointed 12 who he also named apostles so that they might be with him. <clears throat> so he's, the word God says, so they might, that they might be with him. The word God also says, if Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it, it, it is that the bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Amen. So we have to be really, really strategic and think about what is or what are our priorities what are our priorities number one it should be the lord number two should be our families number three our work or our ministry and that should be our priorities you know we battle so much and i'm being sincere because the work is a lot the work is too much but we, and if not, Brother Mark, my spiritual father will remind me. He says, okay, 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 okay. Before everything, let's seek God. Let's seek God. So daily, we have to seek God. Daily. We have to have an intimate relationship. We do not know when we're leaving. We do not know if he's coming back soon. So be prepared. Be prepared. And the worst thing it will be like, oh, gosh. You know, so be prepared all the time. And then the other thing is like because you have this intimate relationship with him, he's going to bring you the souls. And because you have an intimate relationship with him, then you, the atmosphere in your family, it's going to be amazing. The power of God in you. Things will change in your home. Your mind will change. The temptations will be stopped. The Holy Spirit will stop all those things. So really, the best thing is have an intimate relationship with the Lord. And so the Lord said, okay, you are to come with me. Totally. 
apostles. And they did. Martha and Mary always have the heart of Mary. That's what we always say. Always have the heart of Mary, even as you serve, like Martha. Does that make sense? Always have the heart of Mary. She liked to be on Jesus' feet and having that intimate relationship. But also serve like Martha. So, and that's what we do. It's like we begin to our day and throughout the day with our relationship with the Lord. And then, you know, we serve the people because we have to serve. We have to serve them. And if you have a secular, many of you have a secular job, then make it also where you share the love of God. So it won't be so heavy on you because the atmosphere can be so heavy sometimes. So, and for last, Jesus equips you for the mission you're sent. There in Mark chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, and it says, uh, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. Okay? So the first thing is that he wants you to be close to him, have an intimate relationship so that he can equip you. Many of us says, I can't do it, Lord. Well, it's because we haven't been close to him. You only say, I can't, when you're not close to him. Because you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. So when you get close to him, that you're able to say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can, Lord. And so um, he will equip you for the mission. Um, there's a verse here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. and says, and he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So who said to the disciples this? Here says Jesus. He says, follow me, and I, I will make you. That means it's not done when he calls you, but he will equip you so that you can serve. Okay, So he will equip you. Uh, many say, uh, well, I can because I don't have the uh, Bible education, all that. No, you know, we have tons of people and um, indigenous people and very poor, very needy. And the thing that they do is like I, we want to. We want to bring the souls, and they begin to work. You know, they begin to work for the Lord. So um, it's amazing how many have this love for Israel up in the jungle. And they said, Pastor, Pastor, tell us about your last trip in Israel. And so we bring them, you know, photos, and they get all excited. And I'm like, how do you do this, God? I mean, we're in the jungle, and they love Israel, you know. <laughs> I don't know how God is, but it's God putting that in their hearts. It really totally is God. Amen. So we finish with this. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. How many here have Christ, Jesus Christ, in their hearts? Amen. So the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. He is the advocate. He is the counselor. He will equip you. He will equip you. So the Lord will. So his word, um, he will put in, your, in your, your mind at the right time. And the Holy Spirit, even though when we encounter something, we don't know what to say, the word of God says that he will speak for us. So there's many times that I've been in that situation, and I'm like, oh, what do I need to say? And the Lord speaks. Lately, the government in Matamoros, where we work, and um, across the border, Pastor has been there and 
Some of you from the church have been there serving with us. And lately, the, the government has changed. It's leftist and um, it's... Um, um, we don't know yet what's going to happen, all right? But um, it, it, it's just to see, you know, there's a lot of mix. There's been a lot of mix there in the government. But anyway, they called us and say, you know, we want you to help us. And I'm like, really? So they called for a meeting like two weeks before we came here. They called for a meeting in the mayor's office and they said, we want you to help us and advise us in what to do. What is it that we have to do? You know, um, thinking about mm, donations of poor people, and they know we have a soup kitchen, a rehabilitation center, a home for children, and then the ministry just got also uh, six pieces of land for a home for the elderly. Because you see a lot of elderly in uh, on the streets a lot and every time the lord reminds remembers reminds me and says you know chacho see them you know they need a home they need a home so if the lord is do, saying that i'm thinking the lord will do it so um help us pray it's called hope homes the children's home is love homes so this one is hope homes and actually they're one next to the other one so that they'll the sisters and um, brothers that are there working they can help each other um it is good for the children also you know the grandpas and grandmas so um so they know the government that we're doing these things and they're like well they're doing something we need to do something so we're beginning prayers so we're beginning to do uh, meetings with them and just advising them what to do but pray for us that God continues to give us favor. I don't like politics. <laughs> so you say, I'm in. I do not. I do not. So when they approach me the first time, they were like, it's not me. You have the wrong man. I don't think so. <laughs> but um, I, I did say we can advise you. We can advise you on what to do. You know, godly counsel. And so... Um, and they're really willing to do many things because they want to, you know, come back after many years. So um, they're willing to do that. And also, uh, once in a while, the government has help, but uh, we don't allow much for the government to help, uh, really, in Mexico, because we really don't want them to have any say so. Because I don't want Jesus out at all. So. Uh, I just say, you know, God provides. God provides. God provides. So, praise the Lord. Help us with your prayers. Please. A lot. We're in places very different, very strategic. But we know God has put us there for a, for a reason. I mean, could we stand up? Is that okay, Pastor? If pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like s most of us have really surrendered our heart to Jesus. But I feel there's someone in the room that needs to come back to Jesus. If you allow me to, I will guide this prayer, Pastor. Is that okay? And... um the Lord knows your heart. I don't know who you are, but the Lord knows your heart. And he's died on the cross for you. And all the sins that you have done, he will cleanse them. He will make you new. He will take the anger away. He will restore your heart. He will give you a new beginning an eternal life we don't know when we're going we don't know if there might be something that happens to us today or tomorrow but he loves you so much that he sent his only son Jesus to die in the cross for you so that 
you will accept him so you open your heart to him he is knocking the word of god says that he has a plan and a purpose for you and a future a good future everything that you will encounter in the future you won't be alone anymore he will be with you he will open doors for you for more than anything else he will give you salvation please repeat after me and it can be in your heart in your mind or if you want to do it with the vo- your voice but if you don't want to do it with your voice but you want to do it with your mind and heart the lord is seeing you and the lord knows your heart and he also is been after you he's been after you he sees the need that you have Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word. And thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you want to save me. I accept you as my Lord, as my Savior. Please, Lord, Take away every sin. Give me a new life. I believe in you, Lord. Thank you for making me new. Thank you for erasing my sins. And thank you, Lord, for remembering me. Dear Jesus, thank you for writing my name in the book of life and giving me eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give a big applause to the Lord and...